Ladies and gentlemen, we are back here on South Alabama Sports. We have the Director of Athletics for Auburn University, Alan Green, on the show tonight. It's going to be a great show. So y'all like and share. Y'all get ready and stay tuned for what's going to be probably one of the best shows you'll see tonight. Welcome to Auburn. Welcome home. Welcome to the only place where the people standing next to you are more than friends. They're family. Family that supports our athletes. Connecting them to the story of Auburn's past. Run like a wild man! Future. Finally, collegiate athletes are going to be able to get paid for their name, image, and likeness. New rules to allow college athletes to earn money off their name and image. Name, image, and likeness. N-I-L. Image and likeness. Home to world-class resources. Home to War Eagle. Home to a spirit that is not afraid. Today is going to be the kick ass. <laughs> Home to you. All right, why all the. It's the people. And because Auburn men and women believe in these things, I believe in Auburn and love it. And we are back here on South Alabama Sports with one of the best athletic directors in the country and the SEC, Alan Green. How are you today? Michael Warrigal. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So we are so excited for you to join us today. And we have a jam-packed show, NIL recruitment, the college athletics landscape, and all in between, and even yeah. the future of the Auburn Tigers and we're not going to spend no we're not going to waste another time so we're going to get into the NIL first off a huge thank you and a huge great job to the guys at War Eagle Production for that opening video that video was launched when Auburn uh, announced its uh, NIL or initiative called Spirit and that was a great video by those guys at War Eagle Production but uh, Director Green you know, NIL is kind of a fluid situation. Auburn has come out in the last past days to talk about, you know, some things, uh, talk about some things and some groups they've partnered up with. So just talk, just tell us and all the viewers about the NIL at Auburn University and how it's shaping our athletics department. No, this is actually perfect timing. So 366 days ago, actually probably more like 368 days ago, um, you know, January 1st of 2021, this new world of NIL uh, entered entered our lives. And one of the first student athletes to capitalize on name, image, and likeness was Bo Nix, uh, who was our starting quarterback. He has now since transferred to Oregon. Uh, but that that's an indication of the brand, the power of our brand at Auburn and the entrepreneurial spirit of our student athletes. You know, a year later, lots has changed. I mean, we've had you know state laws put in place. We've had state laws repealed. Uh, who knew what a collective was prior to uh, you know these last several months uh, in our in our space? But one of the things that's really important to us is that we make sure that we provide our student athletes an opportunity uh, to to build their brands. Number one, and number two, take advantage of the the opportunities that the NIL space offers. 
um, we're blessed. You know, we don't brag about our numbers, but we've had several millions of dollars our student athletes have generated off of their name, image, and likeness. And we're one of those programs who are leading the way. And I think that speaks volumes to our student athletes. It speaks volumes to the brand of Auburn University and our athletics department. And it speaks volumes, to, like I said, to the entrepreneurial spirit of our student athletes. So we're excited uh, for, for them to be able to capitalize on these opportunities. And uh, we obviously look forward to a world where um, we know things are going to change. And we just have to make sure that we're prepared and, and on the leading edge of making sure that our department is prepared to support our student athletes. You're muted. So before I hand it off to co-host Wendell right there, you know, you were a college athlete and NIL wasn't around back then. So just tell us, you know, back then, you know, the, it would, it would, would have NIL made you go to a different college or, you know, how would it have, how would it, you know, persuade your decision to, you know, play collegiate baseball? Yeah, it's really hard to say. I mean, part of why I went to college was because, uh, the, the, the worldwide network that uh, my alma mater had and understand that I was going to get a great education. I think for, for, for those of us who, and I had a chance to play professional baseball and, and live out my dream, but it was more important. College was more important than just trying to make a buck. I, I wasn't trying to just go to quick dollar. Um, I was trying to help prepare myself for life. And that's part of what we're doing now. There are some student athletes, a very small percentage who, really are after the almighty dollar, but I think a majority of our prospects and our student athletes, they truly want that Auburn experience, that unique Auburn experience. And they wanna be around people who are gonna care about them and help uh, put up the building blocks for, for their success in life. And NIL is just another piece, honestly, and no different than academic services or strength and conditioning um, or any other service that we provide our student athletes. NIL is simply an opportunity for them to um, take advantage of, of it if, if they so choose and, um, and, and let us uh, help them to the degree that we can uh, to, to provide that opportunity for them. So now we're going to get passed over to coach Wendell over there. Oh yeah. You know, that, you know, come as talking, speaking about the NIL, you know, it's, you know, of course, it's, it's, it's a big deal all over the uh, nation, but, you know, I was talking with Andrew and Michael, uh, before the live, you know, I, I haven't really heard Auburn's name called out, you know, in the NIL, you know, news lately, you know, so that, I mean, obviously y'all got a great NIL program going for them. Um, you know, you're not hearing about, obviously the players are satisfied with what they're getting, uh, which is a huge, could be a huge thing, you know, for y'all. You know, tell us, a bit, tell everybody a little bit, you know, with, you know, how, how impactful is uh, Coach Harson, you know, helping you with the NIL deal to, to keep uh, your athletes at Auburn? Yeah, I think it's, number one, it's important to remember that the athletics departments, when we say we're not involved, we're not involved in brokering deals for student athletes. I think that's very important to know. Our, our jobs are not to bring a third party and a student athlete together or a prospect together for name, image, and likeness. So there's, there's not a lot that we're doing actively in the space to, there's nothing that we're doing to broker deals. Uh, but we are what we are doing is helping people understand our Auburn family members understand how important NIL is to our student athletes and helping our student athletes understand that if they want to take advantage of the time and place that where they are in college athletics, that they can. All we're trying to do is help, you know, help our young people understand that this is basically an employment opportunity. It's a way to earn income. And we can't forget that Uncle Sam's going to want some tax dollars. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you got to pay your taxes. Yeah. You got to file your taxes. There's some financial literacy that's involved. It's more than just, you know, sending a tweet or doing a book signing or showing up or whatever, you know, for a party or whatever the case may be. But there are responsibilities attached to some of these, to these NIL deals. And our jobs are to help them understand that it's not a free paycheck just because very rarely does someone want something for free. And I would even argue no one wants anything for free. So when it comes to our coaches involvement, it's more about the development of our student athletes and helping them uh, just understand why it's important for them to take advantage of it if they want to. And if they don't, that's fine also. And we're, we're here to support them in so many other ways. And obviously the landscape of college athletics is forever changing. You also have the transfer portal. Now you add NIL. How has the transfer portal and the NIL really affected not only the college landscape, 
but I'll go the high school landscape coming up. Yeah, so high school is probably harder for me to um, to address because I don't I don't deal with it every day. But you had mentioned just a couple of things that are in our system. So yes, there you know, college athletics is constantly evolving, and it doesn't take any longer to look a couple of days ago where you had USC and and and, um, and UCLA move over to the Big Ten. You know, several months ago we had Oklahoma and Texas um, are joining the SEC. That's just conference realignment. So if you if you think about the big topics in our industry, which we've I should say never had to deal with, but many of them we've not had to deal with before. And we've not had to deal with them at the same time. So whether it's the transfer portal or, or transfer deregulation, NIL, there's you know the, the litigation that's out there, which most people don't pay attention to, but those of us in, in leadership positions in our industry pay an immense attention to. Engagement from Congress um, in, in our space. Uh, you think about... Um, you know, just the, the combination of the transfer portal and NIL coming to coming to, into play. There's a lot of topics that, you know, and then if you also think about the NCA leadership change and not just the CEO of the NCA, but just the, I'm trying to think about how do we reshape or re-envision the, 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 the NCA. And so the transformation committee is a part of this conversation. College football playoff is a part of this conversation. Intern, I say internally, but as a league, we're having conversations about football scheduling. And so when you put all those things in to get together, it's, it's really difficult to start pulling out pieces and saying, okay, well, which one do we want to tackle first or which one do we want to tackle right now? Because they're all intertwined. And that has never happened before in our industry. So when I tell people and those of us who are in our industry, when we say the job is different now than it was two years ago, and let alone COVID and social injustice, the job truly is very different than it was even two years ago. And the things I'm spending my time on weren't even on my radar two years ago. So that just goes to show you how much things have changed in our in our industry. And I don't I don't know if people have a full unless you're in it every day. I don't know if people have a full appreciation of of how complex things have gotten over the last couple of years. I'm a so- four- Oh, you got it. You got it. Yeah. Before I switch the back to Michael, I know Michael's excited and Michael has a lot more questions than I do, but <laughs> I just want to ask you this. You try to transfer to the uh, recruiting side a little bit. Obviously, since you've been AD, there's been a lot of uh, coaching hires you made and a lot of athletes being recruited by your coaches like Bruce Pearl, getting phenomenal basketball players like Walker Kessler and Jabari Smith. Then you have gymnastics with Suni Lee. And then you obviously know, Coach Harson coming in, getting a lot of big time players as well. You have baseball going to Omaha. Just talk about your staff, literally, that you have, you know, under you as coaches, just getting all these recruitments in, what that means to the university as Auburn's really, I think, on the rise and being able to compete more in the SEC. One of the things that we're really fortunate about, and I appreciate you asking that question because it allows me to brag on our coaches. So we have 15 head coaches who represent 21 of our sports. We've made probably five or six coaching hires, and you mentioned some of them. Uh, Leroy Burrell is the most recent one, our track coach who we hired from Houston. He he and his staff have been uh, um, conference coaching staff of the years, and they've won more titles than probably anybody else um, in the American at the time. And so we're excited to have him on board. And I think there's a common thread. Number one, they're great people. And I think prospects and their families can – see through if, if you're lying to folks or not. And I think, you know, when prospects come on our campus, they feel the family atmosphere. They, they feel the genuine nature of our coaches and our support staff uh, whenever, whenever they're in town. Not to mention that they're really, really good coaches and they care about our student athletes. And they also have a strong desire to be successful. And when you understand, you know, when you put all those pieces of the puzzle together, with our help as an administration of supporting the vision of our coaches. And mind you, each one, it's like it's like trying to manage 15 different entities, right? Because each coach in, in each sport has a little bit of a different culture. The fabric of the, the sport is different and they have different needs. So trying to make sure that we're providing all that we can to each of our coaches and their respective needs is critically important. I don't know how many, the places who are able to do that successfully um, end up having success. And we're, we're very fortunate that we're able to have the success that we've had in particular this past year. 
but you are you're right we're, we're, we're making we're making moves and it's because we're getting better aligned on who we are on what we're about and why we're about it and i think our prospects and our current student athletes see that investment in us and in in them not just on the field and courts of play but off the field and courts of play as well and they bought they buy into that that's why young that's why young people come to auburn is because they know that they're going to find themselves in a family environment where we're going to hold uh, them to a very high standard. We want them to be the best in the country, but we're also going to love on them a ton. And that's there's nothing that I could ask for, particularly as a parent. I want my son and daughter to go to Auburn and play sports. And big Auburn fan right here, he wants to know if there's any upgrades to Jordan Hayden that works at all. Yeah, one of the things that I, um, you know, I know has been worked on since prior to my arrival is improvements to Jordan Hare. And I think there's no question that we've been having conversations, at least since my time here, about what makes some sense. We know that there's a high demand for premium seating. And so trying to figure out <clears throat> internally how we do that. Um, I will tell you that when it comes to facility enhancements, these things are thought of long and you know, very far in advance. We, we have an internal document that, that maps out our facilities plans over the next 10 years. And one of the things that is on that list is upgrades to Jordan Hare. We're trying to figure out, you know, COVID put a wrinkle into things and set us back a little bit. And now that we're emerging from that, the time is actually really appropriate for us to have a little bit more targeted conversations about what the future of Jordan Hare looks like, along with a lot of our other facilities. So the short answer is yes, it's on the radar. Um, what that looks like, I don't know yet. But I certainly understand that there's a need and a desire from our donor base and our fan base for more premium seating. So I don't know if you've ever been to a small little town called Brune, Alabama. Hint, hint. That's the <laughs> great place that I am from. But if you ever get a chance to ride through Bruton, you should attend one of the great sporting events here, especially the Battle of Murder Creek, one of the greatest high school football rivalries in this great state. But that brings me to my question. We have a lot of high school athletes, high school athletes' parents who are watching tonight, and they will love to hear some words of advice from a Power 5 AD, especially from the SEC. What advice do you have for high school students looking to play at the next level? Well, I will say this. I have a daughter who's about to enter her senior year in high school. I have a son who's about to enter his sophomore year in high school. And what I tell my kids is that their education is first and foremost. Colleges will recruit prospects based on <clears throat> their athletic ability, but also needing to understand that there's an academic requirement as well, hence student athletes. And having been a former student athlete, I remember promising my grandmother that I would get my degree. <clears throat> we all know the ball is going to stop bouncing at some point in time, or you'll stop competing in your whatever your sport is of choice and of passion. <clears throat> and so the real question is, you come to Auburn because we can help prepare you for the next phase of, of, of sport. And so if you have an opportunity to play professional sports, there's no more nurturing place in Auburn to be able to do that. But more importantly than that is that we want to help prepare you for life. So you may pay, you may play professional sports for two, three, five, ten years. So that puts you at you know roughly 32. And what are you gonna do with the rest of your life, yep. right? And we want to make sure that you're prepared to live out that 32 and beyond, or that 24 and beyond, so that you they can provide for their families um, and provide for themselves. And so that they can give back and reach back down and pull someone else up so that they can be successful in life. If we can continue this cycle of, of constant improvement and development, and if we can truly care about this, care more about the success of others than our own, then we'll make the world a better place. And so it starts with having people who understand and who truly value the desire to play professional sport, if that's an option for them. And if that's not an option, or even if it is, the desire to be better people. That's, that's what we're about. We are in the education and development industry, and our hope is to see people live out their dreams in professional athletics. But if they're not going to do that, then I want to see them be professionals in life and be ultra successful. So 
you mentioned it earlier, the, the, the landscape of college athletics is changing from recent news that UC, USC and UCLA are jumping ship to the Big Ten. And earlier last year or earlier this year, uh, Texas and Oklahoma, you know, they were granted uh, membership into the SEC. So if you can, don't give us anything confidential, but if you can, just tell us as an athletic director in the SEC, what all takes place in, in making those decisions for member institutions? Well, all right, so you're asking me to talk about Texas and Oklahoma and UCLA and USC. And, and yes, and, and, and to make it even better, I want to get Andrew to put you on the big screen so people can really look into your eyes as you say this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, okay, great. You sure did do that, actually. Uh, you're, you're asking me to speak on, on a topic of, of schools that, that are, are not schools that, that we represent. Here's what I'll, I, my thoughts on the, on the national landscape as, as, we think, as we see things shift. There's been lots of talk about money and um, the driving force behind uh, the majority of the revenues of our athletic departments. They fall on the backs of our season ticket holders and our donors and then the multimedia rights. And so thinking about ESPN and Fox in particular, they are in a position where they've got some some leverage to be able to help articulate and envision what financial resources uh, might be available if particular schools um, join a particular conference. And as we're seeing this, this, I guess, this sea change and the shift play out amongst conferences, it, it, it does come down to being able to have enough resources to be able to provide um, a truly transformational experience on one's campus. And that, that is different depending on the school you're talking to. So, but by, by and large, it's trying to trying to find a fit for one's institution, uh, a fit with a conference that that will help them um, achieve even greater success than they're already having. You can take me off the big screen now. <laughs> <laughs> so it it is rapidly changing, and like you said, I, money is sometimes behind all of this. Uh, but during these during these changes. You as an athletic director, I've seen it as a student on campus. You know, you're very involved in the student body and on the university and in the community. Uh, but how have how has Auburn been able to keep up with the ever changing landscape of college athletics to make sure that they don't that they or we don't fall behind? No, I, th I think the way that you correct yourself is absolutely right. This is a we conversation. This is not solely an Auburn athletics conversation. So we talk about how we're an everything school and we want to be successful in all that we do. And that just does, that doesn't just mean in sports, but that means on the academy as well. We want to have the very best college of engineering we can, the best business school, the best human sciences, um, go on down the line. We want to have the best band in the country. And so that takes investment. It's certainly, you know, like I said before, a lot of what drives our revenue is the, the, the money we get from the conference, which by and large is, is from our multimedia rights. Um, the other piece comes from our donors and our fans and our, our boosters. For people who want us to be successful, then it needs to be a we conversation, right? We need to make sure that we're doing all we can to provide opportunities for our coaches and our student athletes. So that means that we need to figure out ways to continue to invest in our facilities. That means that we need to figure out ways to continue uh, to have NIL opportunities for our student athletes. That means we need to find the resources to make sure that our teams can try to fly where they want to try to fly. Because I will tell you, the more that we invest, the more um, uh, expect, the higher the expectation is that we have success, which means that we need to continue to invest, which means that we need to continue to make sure that people are bought in. Bon, 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 bon. So we are having a, a couple of technical difficulties going on. Andrew will be back in a moment. Uh, but okay. Auburn has your, question, your questions are good, Michael. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, also, he also is a huge Alabama fan. So you know, <laughs> uh, there's a reason why he's having technical difficulties. <laughs> well, there you have it. You oh, know, man. you know, we can't we can't stand those people up north as they say. I didn't say that. I didn't uh, say that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hey, so, 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 so <laughs> see, I'm sitting here listening. I'm trying to, I was trying to transition from my iPad to my phone, 
but I couldn't help but over here, you're over here. I mean, I did my stuff off the record, but you had to do your stuff after I leave. I get away. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll let you take another shot on the record, so it's all good. We'll call it even. You know what? <laughs> I'm not going to take any shots. I, I promised <laughs> myself I wouldn't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> you're kind, man. <laughs> so, Auburn, ha- Auburn has went through a, a leadership change at, at the president spot. Uh, president Chris Roberts is now the new president at Auburn University. Just talk about how the Auburn University administration and this new administration. Uh, realignment so, and recruitment. Thinking, and, you know, so. the, Alabama guy, the, the Auburn guy has something to go different. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's having some technical difficulties. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. We got you. Okay. Oh, I didn't finish my question. Of course. <laughs> but, yes, always going through leadership change. So just talk about how the administration has been a help to the athletic department. Yeah, no, uh, Dr. Roberts has been great to work with these past couple months so far. Um, we've had lots and lots of dialogue trying to catch him up to speed on where Auburn Athletics is. And then obviously where Auburn Athletics is going, um, you know, we, we've had a ton of success this year um, and it's been great to have his support and the support of the folks in Stanford Hall and the Board of Trustees. We, we, we recognize that so much of what we do, like football, and this is a conversation we have repeatedly uh, in our shop, but football drives the revenue and the other sports drive the value. And we certainly recognize that having, you know, gymnastics be in the final four, you know, top 10 programs in both golf, top 10 program in baseball, um, a number one ranked team in men's basketball. Um, I mean, go, go, you know, equestrian win, you know, the fourth SEC championship in a row. All of those things add value and create energy around Auburn. And if we can use our success to leverage uh, success of university, then we're more than happy to do so. So I look, I look forward to continuing to have conversations uh, with President Roberts about our future and just in, ensuring that we are being good stewards of Auburn, that we're representing Auburn in a way that is that is uh, emblematic of the Auburn creed and continuing to, to be as successful as we possibly can. So I, I think Andrew has something he wants to say. He t- he's smiling <laughs> hard over there. So just buckle up and get ready. <laughs> so... Like I said, I'm gonna. I, I got to be professional about this, so I can't take shots at Auburn tonight. I'll do it off the record again. But obviously, you know, you're talking about all the programs at Auburn having success. Your baseball program really caught, caught my attention this year with Coach Thompson and what he did for Auburn, making it to Omaha. And my boss is a big Auburn fan. Now, me and him joked about it the whole time. And I really thought Auburn was going to make it all the way. But just having him at the helm and, you know, Plainsman Park, it's one of the best, I think, in the SEC. Do you have any plans for upgrades or talks about upgrades? And also, what did that run for the baseball program? Do you think, in your opinion, really will try to elevate it the next year for, I guess, value for the program? Yeah, um, it's interesting. I was actually listening to uh, Coach Thompson's uh, interview with, uh, with Andy Burcham today, and one of the things he said that stuck out to me was, our fans have shown up. And Plainsman Park is one of the coolest settings in college baseball. And um, as a former baseball player myself, I, I, I tend to enjoy just sitting in the dugout at Plainsman Park. Um, but they have. They, they bought their tickets. They've, they've shown up. Um, Butch has done, and his staff and the student athletes have done their job. We've been to Omaha twice in the past three seasons. That's, and we probably should have a couple other times prior to. That's remarkable considering um, just the position of, of, our, uh, of our program in terms of facilities, right? So we, you know, Butch is, and his staff are, are compensated um, well, I'm sure that, I shouldn't say I'm sure, I know, because we're in discussions now about re-engaging uh, from, a, from a financial position and supporting he and his staff. We also have been looking at Plainsman Park and some upgrades uh, for the last, really in depth, probably the last year. So we did a, a project out in the right field and we did some batting tunnels out there. The original plan was to add premium seating above, uh, above that project. So we've gotten um, some approvals from the Board of Trustees to hire architects to do that. We've also had some architects looking at some more expansive projects that, I'm, that, that I'll sh- we'll share uh, when the time is right. 
but I guess for the for the fans out there who are, are baseball fans, um, just know that we are um, in in the stages of having some internal dialogue, and I've actually have some some drawings of some other projects that I think the fans will be excited about. But again, that's why I mentioned before it's a two way street. So when 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 we go more public with this, we're gonna need our fans to contribute, right? We're, for everybody who says, "Hey, give Butch what he wants," or you know, the baseball program deserves this. It's now going to be time for people to invest. And we are definitely going to, from an athletic side, uh, we'll demonstrate that. But it needs to be a we. And we together can do it and we will do it. And I'm really excited about the future of the program under under Butch's leadership. So I couldn't keep it. I couldn't hold, I couldn't be professional any longer. I had to show that Auburn pride. I had to let it out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Alan Green. That's one to have. That's Andrew Etheridge. Don't go anywhere. South Alabama sports continues in a moment. And the jungle will be rocking in less than a hundred days in uh, Jordan Hare Stadium. You know, direct, you know, direct degree. I don't know who runs the jungle up there, but that's the best student section in the country. And you tell those leaders they're doing a great job. I, I will. I will tell them that they're doing a great job, and I'll make sure I pat them on the back. What What an environment, Jordan Hare. I've been, you know, I've been to a lot of stadiums across the country, and um, our atmosphere is is second to none. You know, um, second to none, I think it's the best environment in the SEC. But, of course, I'm a little biased. Uh, but, you know, the president of the United States, he gives the state of the union. The governor gives the state of the state. But we're going to give you about one to two minutes to give the state of Auburn athletics and let us know, hey, spring was great. You had Sunny Lee, you had Jabari Smith, and you had Sonny D. Just take us through the spectacular spring season Auburn Athletics had this year. I, I, I'll try. There, there's and we're going to put you back on the big screen, too. <laughs> Great. Uh, I would say there's probably too many successes to to count. You, you mentioned Sunni and Jabari. Uh, th those are, I think, the obvious ones. I, I tend to think about some of those that are less obvious. Um, I think about our swimming and diving program. I got a chance to head over to Atlanta on my way up to Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, to visit with um, and watch our student athletes compete in the national championships, and those are the moments where that I, I probably care them that are really special to me. Um, lots of people follow basketball. Everyone follows football. People follow baseball. Uh, you know, we have uh, a niche following in um, uh, in equestrian, and so to to have success in those sports where there's where there's less following and to be around those student athletes and support them means a whole heck of a lot. Uh, from a GPA perspective, our student athletes have been knocking it out the park in the classroom with over 3.0 GPA. I think this is like the 10th, 12th, 14th semester in a row uh, where that's been the case. And, and to do so during, particularly during COVID time, has been particularly challenging. Um, you know, I think about softball and what Mickey has done. He, he took over a really difficult situation uh, and he's working to build that program back for some more success. To think about our men's tennis program who finished, you know, we, we were ranked top 25 for the first time under Bobby Reynolds' leadership. Uh, that's an impressive mark. He's been working hard to build that program. Caroline Lilly, our, our women's tennis coach, finished second in the SEC with the highest finish, in, and she's only been here for this is her third season. Uh, the other ones we know about, like going to Omaha is great and haven't been there again. I actually went to Omaha. Um, I took my youngest daughter, my 10-year-old, and it was so cute how – she talked about when she comes back next year. And I just reminded her, getting to Omaha is really difficult. Being one of the best eight teams in the country is really difficult to do. I think we need to really take a step back and just appreciate all the successes that we've had because they don't come easy. And our coaches have worked their tails off. Um, our student athletes have sacrificed so much that to be a part of, of this environment right now in Auburn Athletics, it's really exciting. It's, it's, it's 
it's a great time to be an Auburn Tiger. And I don't just say that because of what we've accomplished, but I say that because of where we're going. And um, being a, a small piece of that puzzle uh, that, we, that we're putting together is just truly remarkable. And I couldn't be more thankful to our coaches, to our support staff, uh, to our student athletes, and, and most importantly, to, to, to the, the men and women in the Auburn family who support us through thick and thin. Um, it's not a guarantee that we're going to have success. And just because you work, hard work doesn't guarantee success. But we have a faithful following who love Auburn, who believe in it, who love it. And that makes the difference. It truly does. And I'm, I'm humbled to represent the AU and I'm, I'm humbled to, to lead this athletics department. It has been a successful spring season indeed. Uh, I could go on and on about it, but I'm going to give it over to Andrew. So you're known as one of the best dressed ADs in the country. Michael has sent me photos of we're trying to, it was a big dilemma to try to find the photo of you to use for the graphic because Michael kept sending me probably over 50 pictures of you in a suit holding a basketball. I'm sitting here saying, Michael, you just got to pick one. He said, oh, man, well, I don't know which one. I'm like, you're sending him in a bunch of different suits. But also, you know, I say that because my boss texted me and he said, I ask you, he's a big Auburn fan, where can he get one of those jackets you have on right now? (laughs) This is a this is an embarrassing conversation to have. Uh, I I don't I don't care for the lead in at all. Um, I I appreciate um, I appreciate the comments. They're flattering. I you know what I just I, I find clothes here and there, throw them on, and, and I, I go to work. Um, it just so happens that people uh, might like it, and, and Michael finds you know lots of pictures. But by <laughs> by and large, uh, it's 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 not the style. It's the substance. And I, I try to be a man of substance. But like it, it'll be eighty degrees outside. And You're there not is, so far, are you? <laughs> it, it'll be eighty degrees outside. And there is Andrew. Before we go, I sent you that picture. Uploaded so we can show it. It could be eighty degrees outside, and there he is with the shoes. I mean, from, from head to toe. I mean, the best dress. I mean, I'm sorry, but there's not another AD in the SEC that has the swag that Alan Green has. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Michael, it's just not I, happening. I, 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 owe, I owe you. I owe you. 20, actually, I probably owe you a lot more than 20 bucks. Thank you for the compliment. But I, 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 don't, think, I don't think you answered the question, though. You so he, not let me go. He, 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 he's texting my phone here. So where where does he get one of those jackets you have on right now? That's what he wants to know. Yeah, tell him Target. Now, this one, um, what I get, this, this little pullover is, um, that's kind of a special one. Uh, that people can't get. It's from it's from basketball, and it's an old school logo with the AU on the side. Um, from time to time, I'll 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 get a collector's piece. Um, but I look, I I, I shop at Target uh, like everybody else does. And we have a fan on here that said, "Could you bring back, or can football bring back the orange football jerseys?" <laughs> Y'all love the great question. Um, I you know. We went through a series of face masks last year um, that stepped out of our comfort zone. Uh, you know, we're, we're a pretty traditional school and have a ton of history. There's only a few schools who haven't changed their uniforms, and all, Auburn is one of them. I got to imagine that, that it'll be some time before we don an orange, an orange jersey. So you said, hold on, Andrew, but you said this is, you know, Auburn is a very traditional place. So I have a trivia question for you. Can you name the only basketball program in the state of Alabama to make a Final Four? <laughs> <laughs> There's your answer, people. Hold on, hold on. You know. So, so you went there. You went there. But what what basketball program in the state has the highest draft pick in program history and in state history? That is also that is also correct. That is very also correct. And while we're talking about basketball, you did something at the time that was wanted by a lot of people, and you locked him in. Coach Bruce Pearl received the contract extension. Just talk about how much Coach Pearl basketball program, but I see it not only at – Uh-oh. Yeah, we lost him again. <laughs> I think I know where he was going with it, so I'll try to pick up, Michael, where you left off. Um, Number one, you know, during my time here, so I arrived at the height of the FBI scandal and trying to 
disseminate what was fact versus fiction was a real challenge. And so what Bruce and I have talked about since day one is I needed to sit back and just observe and get to know he and the staff and the team and what they were about. And it didn't take long to realize how special of a coach he, he is and how special of a person he is. Bruce is, um, I, I joke, I joke, but it's in all sincerity. Like they broke the mold with him. There isn't another coach uh, in basketball and football who can, um, who can market the way that he does. And it's not just his program, but it's anything and everything that he touches. And I commend the man for that. He, he has such a high motor. I don't know how he has time in, in the mental ability to process and digest all that he does, but it, it's pretty remarkable. He had, he, most people think working with high profile coaches uh, can be challenging and he has been excellent to work with um, in my time here. And the fact that he wanted to be on the sidelines in Auburn, um, the fact that we wanted him on the sidelines in Auburn for, for the rest of his time here made it a really easy play to, to lock him up for a while. And, and honestly, he's, he's the one of the best ambassadors the university has. He's arguably the most popular person um, in Auburn and maybe in the state. Well, he's the most popular person in Auburn. I was going to talk about Andrew. You know, Coach Saban is, is pretty damn well known himself. Um, but but Bruce has a way with people that is just it, it's something that you, you can't recreate that. And it's just been such a joy to watch him build this program. It's been fun to have been a part of a final four run. It's been fun to be, have been a part of um, a couple of, of conference championships. Um, I'm very blessed to 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 have been a part of uh, the growth and development of that program in particular and um, really, really enjoy working with them. So before I give it back to Andrew, because Andrew and Wendell, they're going to take it over and they're going to discuss the football program. But before they do that, uh, there, there's a program that I've been watching and a lot of Auburn fans have been watching. And I, hopefully I don't go out again. If I do, I'm just going to go ahead and spit it out. But uh what coach Johnny Harris has done with the women's basketball program, you know, um, I do want to apologize to you publicly. I haven't done this, but when we beat Tennessee, I let the court storming. I just want to apologize to that. I'm so sorry. But that was a very, uh, very monumentous win for the women's basketball program. Just talk about how she has made an impact on that program since day one. Yeah, Coach Jay, she, you know, when we, went, when we went through the process to look for the next leader for women's basketball, Coach Jay had this aura about her that was calm, reserved, but fiery at the same time. And I could see the passion in her eyes and just in the way that she exudes this confidence about being able to help restore our women's basketball program to a time when Coach Champy was at the helm. And the fact that we upset and beat uh, three top 25 teams this past year is an indication of how good of a coach she is. And she's working to put more of the pieces of the puzzle together. You know, someone talked about it's the orange and blueprint. Um, they have built programs before. She's been a part of that. What she's doing now is is kind of mirroring BP. And I will tell you, and I know we're going to get to football, but it's so much easier to do it as a basketball coach when you're only responsible for 15 or so student athletes. You've got a staff of maybe 10 at most, whereas in football it's 120 athletes and a staff of 40 to 50. So, but Coach Jay has been able to get out in the community and people have bought into her vision, her leadership. And I'm super, I, I, Michael, I like you, I'm so excited and I, I want so badly for her and her program to be successful uh, because she deserves it. She and her staff have put the hard work in and I certainly look forward to the future uh, of, of women's basketball here at Auburn. And trying to, uh, just switching gears of football now, Obviously, you know, there's a lot of talk in the off season, you know, a lot of drama, a lot of speculation. But now you're here. You're going into August and fall practice is on us. Football season's right around the corner. Explain uh, what you're most excited about this year to see with the football program at Auburn University. <laughs> yeah, in so many in so many ways, last year was year zero. And this really is the first year. When I go back to last year um, and this is – just the reality of where we were, you know, coach took over a program. Um, he's a little bit more of a disciplinarian and uh, more into details. Gus was more of the, you know, players coach. And Harsa is a players coach, but they, they come at it from very different angles. When you add in the transfer portal, when you add in name, image, and likeness, when you add in COVID, 
it just cre it creates um, an environment that is it's not conducive for growth. Uh, this past, I say year, um, these, these past eight months or so, the football program has actually had a chance to grow. Um, There's some players who are no longer part of the team. Those who are part of the team truly want to be here and recognize the progress that's been made. They're a part of that progress. Uh, he's, you know, the, the, the football staff is retooled. And the more I'm around the players, the coaches, Coach Harson, the more I see the building blocks being put in place for what can be a really successful tenure at Auburn. I know that we want, you know, our fans, uh, us, you know, us as administrators, our coaches, our student athletes, everybody wants to win right now. And the expectation is that we win right now. But the reality is our program wasn't built and what we went through last year wasn't built to win right now. There's a there's a lot of work that has to be put in to create um, a sustainable program, not just building a football team, but building a program. And so what we're going to see this year, kind of in year one, is in a normal year, this is the type of execution, the leadership, um, uh, the, the play calling, um, the, the, the attitude. That's where we're going to start to see this start to take shape this year. And then as we, as we go through this season, being able to build on that in the future, I've run across so many football coaches um, across the country both in this league and in other leagues who talk about Coach Harson knows football and, he, and we are going to be successful. We have to continue to recruit well. We have to continue to, be, to lock arms and understand that this is going to be a process. It's going to be a process. And if we can be disciplined enough to stick to that process, um, he's going to, he sits between two really good coaches right now. Um, and we can build something that's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty special. Now, before I switch it over uh, to Coach Wendell over there, your time in Auburn, obviously you've had a lot of big moments you've been a part of with the basketball program, football program. But what is one big moment that you'll never forget so far since you've been at Auburn? There's so many moments. There's so many moments. Um, there's so many moments. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say a couple, and they're probably more behind-the-scenes stuff. So final, we'll take Final Four. Um, when we went to the Final Four, <laughs> when the charter plane pulls up, they have you know buses with you know all branded out with your logo, and they have this little convertible that's like a pace car. And it was really cool to have a couple of staff members jump in the convertible <laughs> and drive off. So that was a pretty cool moment. Uh, at the College World Series, I remember you know walking in from Creighton down the street and walking in through center field for the opening ceremonies. Um, I also remember at, uh, at the College World Series of taking a picture on the field with my father, myself, and my son on Father's Day. Uh, the three generations is, is, is pretty, pretty, pretty special moment. The other things truly revolve around student athletes and getting to know them. Um, I remember in baseball when, when we were in Gainesville and um, there was a ball that bounced off of our, our player's glove and hit a home run and we lost to Florida. And in such a weak moment to see the team rally around their teammate, um, to me, showed the true culture of that team. And it's it's moments that most fans don't get a chance to see that, that I do that makes what I do so rewarding. And so many of you see, you know, you see game day, right? Regardless of what school you cheer for, you see, you see game day in whatever sport and you make your value-based judgments on, on, on the outcomes of those games. And I see, you know, for taking football, for example, I see Sunday through Friday and I get a chance to be at practice. I get a chance to be in the locker room. I get a chance to be in the training room. I get a chance to be in the weight room. Um, I get a ch chance to sit in team meetings and I get a chance to have conversations with our student athletes where I, kn I know that someone's dealing with the death of the family or someone just broke up with their girlfriend or someone's trying to figure out how they're going to you know, pass this test. Meanwhile, everyone else is thinking about, well, why didn't they block that ball or catch this thing or do whatever? Like, there's a lot of things that are going on in our young people's minds. And just because our student athletes are super athletic and have muscles popping out everywhere, now the best in the country at what they do, they're still your age. They're still 18 to 22 year olds 
who still suffer from mental health, who still suffer from anxiety, whether it be performance anxiety or another form of anxiety. They still are trying to figure out how to make their families proud. They're still trying to perform to the best of their ability in a chaotic environment. And I try to remind people, how would you, how would you feel if it was you know, your brother or sister or your son or daughter or your grandchild out there who's performing in front of all these people and they just don't make it, they, they just don't get it right 100% of the time. They're not professional athletes. They're young people who are trying to do the best that they can. I get a chance to see most of their flaws and I also understand how that, that translates into, at times, their performance. There was a student athlete, and I'll, after this, I'll, I'll let y'all ask them the question. After, one of, after a pretty significant game, we ended up losing, and there was a student athlete who just sat in the, in the corner of the locker room. And I sat down next to him. Them, now when I say them, um, I sat ne down next to the student athlete. And I just said, how are you? And they shook their head and they said, I just can't figure out how to win. <laughs> and, and when a student athlete is that vulnerable with you, like that just, that, that touches me because that's why we do what we do. That's why we do what we do is to be there to console that young person at a moment when they're at one of the lowest points. They have since turned around and have become a leader and a winner, but no one else is gonna see that in a, that exchange. That's not going to be on camera. It's not going to be on Twitter. It's not on CBS or ESPN. But I, I have, and lots of our administrators have, and coaches have those moments day in and day out. You just don't hear about them. And that is, wow. And that was pretty powerful <laughs> stuff right there. I'll tell you, I, yeah. I'm sitting listening, and you're right. I mean, a lot of people don't think about it. You hear people say all the time, like athletes opposed. You guys don't know, you guys don't care about, you know, mental health or what people are going through. A lot of fans don't. They just care about wins and losses. But what you just said is spot on 100%. That was, that was powerful stuff. And hopefully a lot of people that are watching and will watch see that side. And that's uh, and that was good. You brought that delight. Thank you. No, it's my pleasure. That's the joy of the, of the Sunday through Friday of what we do. Exactly. Uh, you know, it, it's a you know talking about you know how how impactful that you know it, it can be. You know, despite going, you know, yeah, I know you uh, you and Andrew was picking back and forth, you know, about Alabama and Auburn. Um, you know, I'm an Alabama fan myself, but tell everybody how important the the Iron Bowl is for not just the state but the SEC. You know, despite the you know who you, what the team you're rooting for or you know, you, you got to have a lot of recruits there. It's an in-state rivalry. You know, a lot of fans are, you know, divided on it. But as for state, to me personally, look back and, you know, think about it, it's, it's a huge thing for when you come to the state of Alabama, you know, that's one of the things, you know, stables that they, they mention is the Iron Bowl. What's your, you know, what is the important thing that makes it so important for the, you know, for the state? Uh, I'll, I'll – <laughs> It, it is the most intense rivalry um, in college athletics, uh, not, it, regardless of the sport. It is the most intense. I'll put it this way. So I had a conversation um, when we won the Iron Bowl a few years ago. I had a conversation with one of our donors, and I said, what's it, who lives in Birmingham? I said, what's it like, you know, having just won the Iron Bowl and living in Birmingham? And the story that they shared was on Monday, you know, they went to the gym and the, the, the Alabama fan who wears their Alabama shirt every day in the gym uh, and always talking about how great their team is, wasn't wearing their shirt and couldn't look them in the face. And, and, and I think that that is, um, I think that's a, an example that, that, that transcends uh, the importance of the Iron Bowl. It does, like it, it is, it's deeply personal. It is deeply personal. And if your team wins, you have brag and I, I you have bragging rights for the year. And it, it sounds cliche, but it's so true. And if your team loses, then all you do is think about the Iron Bowl next year and how you're going to get them back. And it's been such a great rivalry. And, and you know, Coach Die and some others helped get the, the Iron Bowl on campuses. It was that 30, 30 years ago or so. Like, that was monumental. That was monumental, and it is so intense. It's um, I joke and tell people it's the worst game of my life. 
<laughs> I'm, so stressed out. I'm so exhausted and there's nothing I can do about it except for standing on the sidelines and just watch and listen to the collisions that are happening down there. And I think the funny thing is the rivalry is more is outside of the, the gridiron because a lot of the players played high school together. They're friends. They know each other. Yeah. Um, they just chose to go to different schools and arch rivals. And after the game, I remember after my first Iron Bowl, I was expecting to have to break players up, but it's amazing how they come together and hug one another and talk about how good of a game it was. Like they're actually the example of how it should be. Um, but outside of the gridiron, it is, I mean, it's pandemonium. And if you, if you have to go through it in order to be ready for it, and it's just, it is, um, it truly is the most intense sporting event I've ever been a part of and have nothing to do with, how good or, or not we, we are, we, we do in the game. And I'm going to beat Michael to this. I know he's going to say it. But what has Bruce Pearl and Nate Ost added to the rivalry? Because now me and Michael, we don't really talk about football much anymore. <laughs> we do. But me and Michael go after basketball. And I absolutely hated last year. Last year to me does not exist with basketball. But I've been a Coleman I can't just it. But that that that's why it's a rivalry because you just erased it from your memory. I'm I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna make this bet right now. It's not really a bet. I would say this: if Bama gets beat by Auburn this year, and we we're not gonna say football because it's not gonna happen in football, but in basketball, if it happens in basketball, I'll wear an Auburn football shirt. I'll post it on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever, and I'll wear that for a whole entire day. Michael, you heard that, right? I, I, I heard it, and yeah, I heard it. Y'all. That's, that's I did. Um, um, but, and no, also, you were also, and to add to your question, you know, you you know NATO's because you were, y'all were both at Buffalo, so you, please tell us about that as well. Yeah, um, I, I have a great deal of respect for, for Nate. And I remember when Alabama hired Nate and people asked, well, do you know him? And what do you think? And I said, um, it's about to be game on because he's a heck of a coach. He's a heck of a coach. He's one of the smartest coaches I've been around. Um, he was great to work with during our time at Buffalo. Uh, you saw a glimpse of how successful he can be, you know, not this past year, but the year prior to. This past year was, I know, was a difficult one for him. Um, the Iron Bowl on the basketball court is going to, I mean, it's, it's going to creep up there as one of the better rivalries in college basketball because, uh, Bruce and Nate are such great coaches and there's such intensity in the way that they coach and their teams play so hard. It is, I mean, you talk about exciting matchups. Those games are exciting matchups. They're fast paced. They get up and down the court. I can't even catch my breath just thinking about and talking about these basketball games because it's going to be fun and it's going to add, it's going to add some energy and excitement to, to what is already a, uh, a delicate rivalry. And I know I joke with Michael about it. I tell him about the jungle. And I've always told him, you know, if I'm going to beat y'all at Auburn, it's going to be your fault. I'm going to say they need to fire the VP at the jungle and hire a new one. <laughs> but I'm, uh, the, I know people pick on it saying, oh, it's a small gym. But I'll say, you know, playing at Auburn is difficult. Watching them, you know, watching y'all host Kentucky, Arkansas, Tennessee, Alabama, whoever it is, it's difficult. It really is. And I told Michael, I I've never been to a game at Auburn Arena. And I plan on going this year to watch them play Alabama if I can stomach it. But what is that atmosphere that Auburn Arena really opened your eyes to what Bruce Pearl has done for the basketball program? Well, I, I think, you know, we, we, we were talking about this earlier about what makes a team successful is a we. And Michael has been integral into creating an environment where you, you want to be a part of it. Right. It's a part of your college experience. And Michael, I'm, I'm so indebted to you. We are all indebted to you because of your passion and your commitment. It, like Your energy makes the difference. It, it truly does. And the, the jungle is, in my opinion, it is a it is. Um, um, I, I guess I'll use the word emblematic again, but it's emblematic of who you are. And everybody, everybody feeds off of you and your passion. And when you're around people, you just brighten their days. And to watch you yell at officials with like, 
the venom. But it does. It truly shows your passion, and there will never be anyone like you. Um, often imitated, never duplicated. And you are a, you are a main reason why the jungle is what it is. So, Michael, thank you. And I'll give credit to uh, the high school me and Michael went to together. He was also a staple on the sidelines of T.R. Miller High School during football season, for basketball season, softball, baseball, track and field. He's had a lot of practice. And he yes. uh, he first went to Auburn, and I'll tell this little story, and I'll let Michael take back over, but. He first went to Auburn, me and Michael obviously stayed in contact. He told me he was getting the VP of the jungle. I'm like, the heck? Okay, whatever. Well, then I see him on TV. We're getting all these autographs and everything. I told Michael, like, hey, man, don't forget about the little people. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's like, oh, yeah. I know last year he told me I have one ticket. I got one ticket to Auburn. I'm like, uh, well, let me see. And I remember I got beat at home. And I'm like, yeah, I ain't going. It's okay. <laughs> no, Michael, uh, you've been great. Well, Thank you. Um, to God be all the glory uh, for that. It is truly him. I, I appreciate the kind words. Um, but, but like you said, you know, you know, Wendell and Andrew doesn't quite know it like you and I and all the Auburn fans watching. You know, Auburn is something special. It's a family. And, you know, wherever you go, you, you experience that. So to wrap this up, and because we're not going to keep you long, um, but just wrap this up. What what is the Auburn family in store for this year? Uh, before football starts, soccer starts, and Coach Hoppe, uh, they, they're fired up and ready to go. Volleyball, and then you will have football. But just tell the Auburn family what to expect this year from the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, you know it's funny. Um, obviously, football is the driving force of our department. It helps funds the experience of of all of our coaches and student athletes. Uh, but I also joke that before football kicks off football kicks off. And so, as you mentioned, uh, Coach Hoppe, she's entering her 24th season um, at the helm. And uh, our soccer program, our women's soccer program, kicks off, uh, you know, about three weeks before football does. So we pay attention to that. We also have a new track and field coach, um, also responsible for cross country. That kicks off as well um, this fall. So there's at least two programs that, that we are paying attention to, along with the one that everyone pays attention to in football. And then uh, Brent Crouch, our volleyball coach, is entering his, I guess it's his third season. His first one was a COVID season. So this is kind of three minus one, if you will. Uh, but he is a consummate professional and teacher. And we've got some big time players who are coming in this year. And that's only going to continue. Um, so we're looking forward to a lot of success out of volleyball. And obviously with football and having an, a year of experience, at least under Coach Harson's belt and his staff, uh, I'm looking forward to having a really successful football program uh, this fall as well. So that that kicks off uh, the fall. And then it's, it's funny, right around October, uh, we start getting into the overlap. And that's when baseball um, – and, and sorry, not baseball. That's <laughs> when, uh, well, I was with you. I know, I know. I know. It's a mess. I don't know how to keep up with it. But that's when both basketball start. That's when swimming and diving starts. That's when gymnastics uh, begins. Um, golf has a, a spring, a fall season. Um, both golfs do so. There's, it, it, although the fan base typically focuses on football, um, I, I know my responsibility and our responsibility is to all 15 head coaches and 550 student athletes, and they're getting rolling here. In a, <laughs> oh my God, I haven't even taken vacation yet, uh, but they get rolling, rolling here in, um, in in just about five weeks. So, like like y'all said. Thank Thank you so much from Wendell and Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, you have been a real treat, not just for us, but for everybody watching. Um, I just, I, I just know, and I see it every day. I just know you here at Auburn to stay uh, because every change in the college landscape, you have made sure that the university and the athletics department has been at the forefront. And I don't care who said that. Mike Floyd said Alan Green is here to stay. And I mean that, and I stand by that. But we truly appreciate you. We do. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best dress and the best athletic director in the SEC. Thank you so and much. Where are y'all? I got to say one more time, roll tie to you. And I look forward to seeing what Auburn does. But like I said, we'll have to see uh, what's in store with the Iron Bowls on the court, on the field. And 
wherever else the diamond, you never that's know about right. boxing match. Sounds good. <laughs> Andrew and Wendell, it was a pleasure to spend some time with you all as well. I appreciate y'all carving out the time to do this. Sir, Thank I will you. see I will see you in August from Wendell. And Andrew, I'm Michael Floyd. That's Director of Athletics at Auburn University, Alan Green. This is South Alabama Sports. War Eagle, and so long, everybody. <laughs>